In this video, I want to show you around IntelliJ IDE. Okay, so when you run your IDE, IntelliJ, open up. Uh, if this is the first time, this is what you're going to see, right? So uh, you'll be able to create a new project, which is exactly what we're going to be doing now. So go ahead and create a new project. Click here. And this happens. Uh, you want to make sure that you go to Java, okay, because that's what we're going to be doing here. So click on this Java tab here. And anything else will be as it is. We're going to go say next and make sure to create project from template. What this does, it allows us to create our main entry point, which is the main function, okay? Main entry point of our application. So you want to check that and go ahead and you can see at the bottom here, it says simple Java application that includes a class with main method, which is exactly what we can we need. Say next. And here we need to name. For now, I'm going to just say exploring. And there we go. In a few seconds, we should have our IntelliJ project. Okay. So there we go. You can see we have here to the left panel, we have this panel here, which has the project. Okay. And if you look to the left, also click on this structure here, it will give you the structure of this class. As you can see, this class um, is called main, public main, and also has a main method or function here, which is the static main entry point. This is where we indeed write our code. Okay. There's a lot of things, as you can see, um, a lot of tools, a lot of buttons that it would literally take us 200 plus hours to understand everything. But the goal here is just to give you um, an overview of this wonderful IDE. Okay, so at the top here, you can see we have this exploring source com and all of this. So, th so this is just showing the path where our main Java class resides, right? So it's inside of our exploring project. It's inside of source com gohul.java.com. And that's where we find our main Java class. We go back to our project. If you change our project structure here, you can see now we have this external libraries. If you click there, you can see this drops down. These are just all the libraries used to compile to make our program work. Okay. So as you can see, these are external libraries. But what's really important to us is inside of our project. Okay. So some of this, so this IDE or idea folder has again, all of the dependencies, all of the files that make sure that our IDE is able to read all this code and then display um, the results that we want. Okay, so you can see there's modules and all of these things here, which you don't need to worry too much about. What we really need to understand where we work, what we need to look into is inside of our source, because this is where we're going to put our source code, which is the code, right? As you can see here, we have our main, which our which is our main Java file. Now, if you go up a little bit, you will notice that we have this com that go java.com. This is the package name. Okay, so it's very important that our code is well organized. So every Java project needs to have a main package. Okay, and usually you notice the package name is the reverse domain name of your website or any website. Okay, and you can make this up. For instance, here I say gohul.com.gohuljava.com. Okay, so notice this again. So you could have said com that my company dot com or com that my company and name of the app doesn't really matter. Just remember, um, the best practice says that we have to reverse domain of our company. Okay, and then inside here, that's where we actually put our source code. And you can see, uh, of course, to the right, far right, we have this tab called Maven projects, click on that. And you can add other dependencies, which will not going to be touched in this course. Of course, we just have at build, which we won't talk in this course, but you can go online and learn more about it. But for now, don't worry too much about anything in that. Now, at the top here, you will see that we have this green play button here. This is very important because this is what will allow us to run our program. For instance, let's go ahead and say here system that out. There we go. That print ln and inside we say hello world again we save 
And you notice I also have a plugin that shows me or shows you uh, what are the things that I'm doing. So this is save all and gives you all the shortcuts to do on Windows as well as on Mac. So it's very handy. Okay, so once we save, you notice we can go ahead and play. And all of a sudden, once this runs, you will see here is going to say Hello World again. Okay, now notice this pops up from the bottom up here. This is our console. Okay, this is where the output of our program will be seen. And of course, to the right, we have this little green bug. This is a debugger, so it allows us to debug our code. So if we click on this, you will notice that now our code is going to enter into debug mode. Okay, if you go back down here, you will see all of the things that uh, will be output for that. So if I go ahead and click here, you notice now we have a breakpoint, and we'll talk more about breakpoints and how to debug in a lot of videos. But now I just wanted to give you a chance to show you around a little bit. So if you go ahead and run this, you'll notice right away, it goes through our code and notice it stopped here and it says the args string will have these values. And of course, we have the main part here, which is the most interesting part, which is the code area. This is where we're going to be able to write our code as you saw here. Okay. And you notice we have also numbers as we add lines of our code, you notice our numbers are incrementing. Of course, you can also go back and forth here. You can snap, for instance, if you want more space to code. You notice at the top here we have this snap button. Snap to the left, and there we go, it's gone. Okay, if you want to see it back again, just click that. So it's a very handy tool, very clean and very concise. All right, so that's uh, an overall view of our IntelliJ IDE. And of course, as we progress in the course, we will learn more about it. Perfect, so I'll see you in the next video.